Okay, now it's time to take our animation into Solaris and set up lights and cameras. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the end of the, the chain the, for this so soccer ball animation, select all the geometry, and press the extract button on the modify shelf to pull that out with an object merge. What we're doing is we're pulling out all the animation on the null object, on the, the squash, everything that's happening there is being pulled out and put into a single sequence that's much easier for us to add an export node to and we're going to export this to USD. So instead of importing it into Solaris the way we did last time, this time we're going to export it. And the advantage is it has a little bit to do with uh, motion blur for animated objects. It's sometimes better to just get it out into USD and go from there. So we're going to give this output name. So USD is just a single file, even if it's got animation in it. We're just going to go soccer ball anim USD in a USD folder and we'll, you know, We'll export that out. And because this is keyframe animation, when we press save to disk, it's fairly quick. So the next step is to go back to Solaris and begin incorporating this element um, into a new shot. Now rather than get rid of the shot we've already done, what we want to do is we're going to label that as shot 1 and we're going to create a second shot that uses the animated geometry. It'll have its, some, of, some of its own nodes um, distinct from here. But at the same time, we also want to share some nodes. So for instance, we're going to take all these, these three lights and we're going to wiggle those out. And we're going to move those higher up in the chain so they can be shared. Now, once I put them back in the chain, they're still going to work effectively for the first shot um, because the scene graph sort of flattens a lot of, of, of that. Um, but it will give us a much better chance of reusing the lights in other areas. So we're going to want the library, the lights, and the backdrop to be shared elements. So we're going to take those and we're just going to move those over a little bit. And once we have those, uh, we want to put down a file, or a ref sorry, a reference node rather, uh, and that's the reference lop will allow us to go get the USD file. So where it says file pattern, uh, we're going to go and grab that and we'll go into the USD folder and there's the file and we'll accept that. Now we bring that in and there it is and we can press play and it's in the scene ready to go. But it might not be oriented quite the way we want. Um, it'd be nice if it was coming from the background instead of across the background. So what we can do is we can use the select tool, uh, select the soccer ball and type tab transform. We sort of did this earlier with the first soccer ball but now what we're going to do is we're going to do it with an animated piece. So we're going to rotate that around uh, on pretty much 90 degrees, push that back, push that over, and then maybe go a little more from this angle and just feel that, yeah that's looking pretty good, that's coming down. Uh, maybe we'll push it back a little bit more before it hits the wall. So once we have that in a good position then to get the shot the way we want, um, we'll have to continue adding elements. And one of those elements is you'll see that we've lost our materials. We have the material library feeding into this, but we haven't assigned the materials. So what we need to do is go and get the one that we already did, and we'll just alt drag that over to create a second one and feed that into here. Now the big difference is the backdrop automatically kicks in and works, uh, but the soccer ball has now got a different name in this this uh, thread. So it's now soccer ball anim mesh. So once we get that cleared up, then the assignment works and we're ready to go. Now once that's in place, the next thing to do is get a camera back in here. So we're going to get a view that we think sort of works. Coming with the ball coming from the top corner and sort of exiting. Oh no, that's not. That's coming straight at us. So tumble around. Uh, coming from the top corner and going out the bottom corner. That's that's more or less in the zone that we want. But let's actually get the camera. So we click on the, the camera tool up here and it'll automatically use that view. Uh, and it's framed. And then we can see how that is. And if it's not quite right, we can lock that camera and do some view changes to really explore some alternatives and get what we want. 
and we'll just keep playing until we get one that we oh the ball doesn't go far enough uh, it'd be nice if it went a little bit further maybe rotate that a little bit and there we go so it's going from the top corner to a nice spot right in front of us okay excellent so we've got a new camera it's automatically called camera 2 and we'll be feeding that into some of the other things appropriately the next thing we're going to put in is the light mixer because even though we're using the three lights from before they might not work effectively for this shot the same way they did before but they're still the three lights we want to use so we drag them over and on the transform tab here it turns out we have all those tools we had on the lights themselves we have the ability to edit them here um, to do the same thing so we can come into here put the soccer ball there and say okay I've got to pick one of the lights and I'm gonna do just specular highlight here okay there we go that's the first light uh, then I can pick another light and I can go in and do specular highlight there maybe over there try over there the key is that we're able to continue to work interactively in this view using lights that were specified earlier and then we can modify all the parameters they need to get what we want there we go that light works better on that side and there we go and of course we can go back to the sliders um, and do some further tweaking with intensity and and so on uh, we can try the lighting right here the high quality lighting here um, or we can kick in a karma render in one or the other so if we go back to karma that'll give us a better sense of of what the lights looking like uh, then from there uh, like I said we could go back to the slider tab here and you know start looking at contributions soloing the different lights um, getting a sense of what the contribution of each light is for this shot anyway we won't tweak this too much just give you a sense of what that is um, we'll just get it set and ready to, to render out um, in yours you can tweak away to get the lights that you want so th what we're going to do now is we're going to take these three nodes here and we're going to alt drag those over to get shot two feeding in and the karma render settings the most important thing here is that we change this to camera number two if we don't do that it won't work um, and then we can start to render um, although we probably want to change the name of the output uh, on this node what's important is that we actually set the frame range to a specific frame range 1 to 120 otherwise we'll just get a single frame we won't get an animation the next thing is to go back to the karma render settings node and on that node uh, we're going to change the name first we're going to put it in a folder so on in the render folder we're going to create an anim folder and just typing it here will create the folder so we don't have to go and do it it'll happen automatically so we're going to go soccer ball underscore anim and then what's important after that is um, to, to add in the frame number. So we're going to go underscore dollar F2. So that's the frame number padded with a padding of 2. And there we go. So now we're ready to render. So now we can go back to here and we can press, uh, well, just check that things are working well. And then when we're happy, we go to the USD render op and we render to disk. And this will do the whole sequence, um, and you can you know keep track of its progress as it goes here. Um, this is going to take a little while, so we'll just fade in and fade back, and it's it's done now. Uh, we're going to go render, m play, load disk files, and we're going to bring in the anim uh, soccer ball. There we go. There's the image in m play, or the animation rather, and we can just press play, and there we go. So now you've created a second shot by setting keyframes, animating, and then bringing all of that back into the Solaris context uh, to get a rendered sequence uh, using these tools. So, great job.